Hi, this is Kevin with Let Me Tech You, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Terraform and implicit and explicit dependencies. Now, whenever you're creating resource dependencies, um, this usually will depend on what you're doing. So, when you're working with uh, certain types of resources, sometimes Terraform already knows what needs to be built um, before um, something else can be built, and these are called implicit dependencies. So these are like the most common um, when you're like you're working with two different resources. Say you're building an EC2 instance that needs an Elastic IP address. You know, when you build that and 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 uh, actually add those resources into your um, uh, code, it's going to know what needs to be built before the other thing can uh, be set up. So I'm going to show you how how we can actually test that out here. So if you haven't seen my other previous videos, we're using the same configuration that we used um, in the last one when we set up our modules. So this is just a VPC that's being created and an EC2 instance that's be, being created using the um, modules for the AWS there. So if you want to pause and maybe kind of um, set these up, you can kind of go back to our other videos um, where we talked about the modules and kind of do that from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another, um, instead of using a module, I'm going to create a resource, an, an EC2 instance that uh, gets set up with an IP address. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go resource AWS underscore instance. It's our resource name. And then I'm just going to put test instance. And then for the AMI, I'm going to use just this AMI up here. So it's just a simple, actually, I'm going to copy both of these because I'm going to use the instance type as well. So let's copy those. And now we got that set up in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an, an elastic IP address and I'm going to create resource. AWS underscore EIP and then the name is just going to be test EIP just something simple and then VPC is going to equal true and then oops, took my stuff out there okay and then for our um, instance that we're going to tie this to it's going to be instance equal AWS underscore instance dot test instance dot id so now we have two resources that's being created and this is uh essentially uh setting it to the resource of aws instance and with this terraform will know that it needs to build the specific um, what what it needs to build first so i'm going to go ahead and apply that and i'm going to Go ahead and speed that up here. Okay, and now as you can see, it's finished and we have that created. So if we go in and look in our, my AWS console here, go ahead and sign in, give me one. All right, we get it signed into our EC2 instances and we see we have three running um, it's probably going to be this one since I didn't name it. It's initializing. And if we go to networking, we can see right here we have a uh, public IP address. So if we look, Elastic IP 18.221, 78.227. So it looks like, um, yeah, and as you can tell, these ones don't have it. So. As you can see, Terraform was able to determine that it, what needs to be built without you having to um, and, uh, specifically state that you needed that done first. So that's what's called a um, implicit uh, dependency. So now we're going to go off and do an explicit dependency. So this could be something like, say, uh, for instance, Terraform doesn't know that you need to have a bucket created before your EC2 instance created because those things don't necessarily depend on each other um, unless you state that they do. 
And a reasoning, for example, this could be is say you're going to be using uh, S3 for to hold your static files for your website. Well, you don't want the instance to be created first before your S3 bucket because you won't have any place to um, put the files. So to do that, what I'm going to do here is open up our code here. And I'm going to create a resource called and I believe if we need to ever source their documentation for S3, let's see what that's stated here. So under resources, we got AWS underscore S3 bucket. You can go down and grab a quick little example, and then we're going to stick this right in here. So then what we could do to then make sure that the um, that the bucket gets created before the instance gets created is we use the depends on um, argument. So if we go into our instance here, well actually let's do this since we already got this created, I'm going to destroy well, actually, I'm going to make a new instance, make this a lot kind of, since this is already created, I'm going to make a new instance, but not that. So we're going to make this a new instance here. We're going to call this test S3 instance. And then in here, I'm going to do depends on, and then we're going to put um, AWS underscore oops. well actually yeah we're just going to do AWS underscore S3 bucket dot B okay and that should then give us our so now what we can do is run another Terraform apply And it should create the bucket first before the instance gets created. So let's uh, give this a second here. And if you want to read more up on this here, you can go and just kind of just Google Terraform depends on and look at some of their meta arguments and more on how this basically is used and things like that. So it's very useful for certain things that you need to have done before another object is created or provisioned. So this should start up here. I'm actually using the Terraform cloud, so there's some delay in actually getting the bucket or the, uh, the configuration sent to the cloud and things like that. So what's error creating up oh, you know what so this bucket needs to be um, unique so you, when you create a bucket name it needs to be unique in the whole AWS domain so I'm just gonna do just type some random stuff Let's go back here type some random text Kevin 20 22 0907 that bucket should not be created so let's try that again so as you can see it actually did try and create the bucket well it's actually probably just reaching out to AWS to see if that bucket is available so let's try to give this a run through again here so it's initializing the plugins and the modules checking everything as you can see it's going to add two resources i do the auto approve only because i know currently what is it's just a dev environment um, i don't recommend the auto approve if you're in like a production environment because obviously you could destroy um or de uh, destroy or delete you know things that you shouldn't and which could make it really bad to uh, kind of get back unless you have backups and things like that of your environment. So let's try to see here what kind of comes up. So as you can see, 
the bucket's created first, then the instance gets created. So now if this was, say, a website that was getting built, our bucket's already there, and then as we get the instance created, we can start to move files into our bucket. If you had this the other way around, your bucket would get your instance would get created. It would try to send files to a bucket that's that's not there, and you could potentially it could potentially air out if you have like scripts that's trying to run stuff like that. So that's it there as far as using um, dependencies. Um, you know, I'd recommend maybe try, uh, you know just doing some various other ones just to kind of get used to doing that. But it's it's very simple process. Um, if you have any other questions in regards to the video. Just drop a comment down below and, you know, I'll be be sure to help, you know, with anything I can um, reach out on my blog, you know, let me tech you dot com. And I got some interesting videos on various cloud networking and automation stuff. So, again, you know, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time.